Hello, so we'll start now. Uh, let's go to the agenda first. So we have a very focused agenda today. Uh, first of all, we'll discuss uh, that why should we choose networking as a carrier and what are the different available options and latest trends in the networking. Uh, we'll also um, uh, let you know that how do you plan your career journey and how to how to find your end goal. Uh, then I'll help you to define your career strategy. Uh, we'll discuss some do's and don'ts, uh, and there are certain things that we can help you with. We'll tell you that. So I, I would say the second part of the presentation, which is planning your career journey and developing a career strategy, that's the most important part uh, that we'll be addressing because I uh, work with a lot of fresh graduates and the professionals. And what I find out is, uh, that there is a there's a gap between uh, what graduates the professional uh, are thinking and what the expectations of the market are. So we will be addressing those points so that you can better address uh, the opportunities which are there in the market and exploit them. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Noman Khan, and I have been working in the networking and the security field for different telecommunication providers and integrators for the last 14 years. Uh, uh, when you talk about networking, the highest level of certification, uh, which is commonly known as a PhD in networking, is CCIE uh, and CCDEs for the design. Uh, I have done CCIE in five different domains, and also I'm a design expert. Uh, with this qualification, there are only 20 people in the world uh, with, uh, with this combination of CCDs and five CCIEs. Uh, so I think that I'm in a good position uh, with my experience and certifications uh, to help uh, other students and professionals to grow their career in the networking field. So uh, starting with, uh, if we define uh, um, on a very basic level, what is computer networking? Uh, so basically, computer networking is all about uh, taking your data or defining how the data between the two systems will be shared with each other. So in a layman term, if I define it, uh, I would say that you make a WhatsApp and a Skype call every day. Uh, the application on your mobile phone provides you the functionality of video, audio, uh, and graphics. But the, the system that takes that information from one endpoint to the which is the source and to the destination endpoint uh, is, is, is networking. So basically networking enables you to take the traffic from one endpoint and deliver it to the destination. Uh, the most complex type of network if we, if we see today is internet. Uh, so if we go to the, if we see the slide and the picture that is on the left hand side, uh, this picture was taken in uh, 1998. And what it is showing is uh, the different ISPs or the service providers in the world uh, and how they are interconnected together. Uh, it was a time when there were only 0.2 billion users of internet, uh, 0.12 billion users. And uh, if you can see that how complex the network is, how the device, how the different service providers are connected together. So we need someone who can manage, operate, uh, troubleshoot this kind of network, and this is what network engineers do. Uh, if you look at 2017, we have around 3 billion users connected to the internet. So 1998.12 billion, and 2017, 3 billion users. So you can see the difference that how complex the network could be today. So for this kind of complex network to manage and monitor, troubleshoot, we need qualified network engineers. So these, that's why the, the computer networking and the security engineers are in high demand these days. So uh, when you take networking as a carrier, uh, what are the different options you have? What are the different job profiles that you can associate yourself with? Uh, one of the things that if you see on the right hand side, there's a graph uh, which is showing the total number of devices connected to the internet. We just talked about there are 17, uh, 3 billion users connected to. Uh, but if you look at uh, the forecast of 2020, uh, this, this, this is a graph that is taken from the Cisco documentation. Uh, if you look at it, there will be 50 billion devices that will be connected by 2020. So this is because of Internet of Things coming in, and we'll define what IoT is 
uh, in the next coming slides. So can you can you imagine like 0 0.12 devices in 1998, 3 billion users connected in 2017, and now we are talking about 50 billion devices connected to a network. Uh, what type of network that would be, how complicated and complex it will be, and who will manage it? These are all questions that the network engineers can answer. So if you if you look at it on the left hand side, there are different positions that that a network engineer can fill. You can be a technician, administrator, engineer, support, design, consultant, analyst, and architect. So these are all the different type of positions. And, and as the technology is evolving, there are new and new positions being created. For example, you don't see cloud engineering here, but cloud engineering is a very demanding position these days. You don't see IoT engineering here. So with time, uh, different positions and different specializations appear. And uh, you know uh, this field is continuously evolving. So, uh, so how does the networking technologies evolve? So, if you look at it in the last 15 years, uh, there, there have been uh, tremendous change uh, in the technology. And if I talk about year 2000, when I started my career, uh, the routing switching was considered as the base technology for the network engineers, and still it is counted as a base technology. But when you, de when you define in 2000 what is a network engineer, it is someone who knows routing and switching. But in the last 15 years, there are so many technologies that we have been introduced that the responsibility of the network engineer has uh, grown tremendously. So uh, you can find uh, network engineers in voice, wireless, security, unified communications, cloud, and IoT. So all of these things are opening new uh, areas of specialization that uh, uh, that engineers can use to grow their career. Uh, so, so you see the see the graph. There are so many technologies. Now, what I want you to do, uh, I want you to do is that uh, be with me on the next seven to eight slides. What I will be doing is that I will be explaining each of these technologies in one line. So what I want you to remember is that what this technology is, because you will be either as a graduate or as a professional, you would like to specialize in one of the technologies, but which technology should you choose? So I'll be also telling in the next seven and eight slides that what are the five star technologies that you should focus on uh, in, in growing your career? Uh, because the, the main purpose, one of the main purpose that, uh, of you know, learning a technology or doing a specialization is finding a good job. Uh, and there are certain technologies which can give you the ROI pretty quickly. And there are certain technologies which are very either stable uh, or very old, or they are very new. Uh, and it will take some time uh, to learn those technologies or the uh, uh, or these technologies becoming a standard. So I'll be giving you some guidelines. I'll be mentioning that which technologies are five-star technologies, and you should seriously think about uh, growing your career in this technology. So let's go to the base technology, which is the routing and switching. This is the oldest technology that we have today. Uh, since the time internet or the network exists, this technology exists there. So if you define routing and switching in, in, a, in a layman's language, uh, uh, switching basically provides network. So it creates network. So they do have different kind of IP endpoints, which includes uh, printers, PCs, IP phones, cameras. Uh, so these, all these endpoint devices connect to a device which is known as switch, and which creates a network. And, and with the help of this network, these devices are able to communicate with each other. Now, when the networks would like to communicate with each other, so for example, you have a, you have a, you have a network in, in Sydney, and you have a network in London, and these two networks need to communicate with each other, so they will go through the routing process. The packet has to be taken from one network, uh, go to the middle service providers, and then to the destination. So if you look at on the left-hand side, you can see the different ISPs, national level ISPs, regional ISPs, local ISPs. So these ISPs are connected through devices which are known as routers. So if I define routing and switching, I would say that switching basically uh, creates network, and routing basically, or a router basically connects network. So this is the base definition. This is a very stable technology, have been there for the last 20, 25 years. Uh, and this is considered to be a base technology that a network engineer should uh, learn uh, uh, before specialization, specializing in any other technology. So you should have the basic knowledge for this one. Uh, 
this is a must for an network engineer. Now, uh, another very uh, important technology is voice over IP. Um, so just to give you an example, if you remember like 15, 16 years back, if you need to make a call uh, between uh, Sydney and US, uh, it, uh, you sometimes you have to call the service provider, ask them to connect the call to US because all those networks were circuit switched. So each time you, you want to make a call to another country, there was a dedicated circuit I located to you for a certain time period, and that's why the calls were very expensive. With the with the with the, with the internet becoming very stable, uh, all the calls today are currently being uh, transported over the internet or the IP network or the packet switch network. So the uh, so on a single link, for example, you can have hundreds of calls flowing at the same time. So this is this is a technology which basically uh, transports voice over the IP network. Uh, a very good area of specialization, especially in the telco environment. Uh, this is a very key technology to transport voice. Uh, then very closely related to voice over IP is the unified communications. So basically unified communications replaces the old PABX system, which uh, uh, the, the old PAB system, which was providing telephony services uh, to the users or the or the people in the enterprise. So with the help of unified communications, uh, telephony coming over IP, uh, you are now able to combine many IP services uh, for the customers or for the users. For example, and now you can have email, collaboration, instant messaging, web application, video conference, and, and everybody is using. So Cisco is the, is, the, is the leader in unified communication, and you can have all these services as part of the telephony. Uh, so that's a big change, and this is also a very demanding field. Uh, uh, most, uh, more and more companies are moving towards unified communications. Uh, the region I live in, uh, I have not seen any government institution or a bank without unified communication systems. So the PA based system time is over. So you can also think about growing your uh, career in this technology. Now. Now comes the first five-star technology, which is information security. So what information security does is that it, uh, uh, it helps you uh, protect your data uh, uh, from unauthorized access uh, or a breach. Uh, uh, so, so industry is looking for engineers who can deploy the complete information security system of an organization. Uh, from the strategic point of view, as well as from the hands-on perspective. Uh, most people, especially the network engineers, think that information security is all about configuration of a firewall and a switch, but this is not true. Uh, if you look at on the screen, there are different modules that, uh, that uh, we have displayed in here. For example, uh, what is the policy, security policy of the company? How do you manage your assets? Uh, how do you provide access control, which means that how do you enter the organization? What is your user and password policy? Uh, how do you maintain your operation security, communication and network security? Uh, how do you encrypt your data? And what are the security policies applied for the human resource? So it's a, it's a full-fledged information security system. Uh, network security is just one part of it. So uh, this, this, is, this is a very, very demanding field. Since the time uh, IP networks are there, this field has been growing. And to, uh, I can assure you because I'm very closely working uh, uh, in a telecom operator with the uh, you know associated with the security uh, domain that it is very very hard to find qualified individuals in this field. Uh, you can find people with uh, with with knowledge of you know, uh, who can configure the firewall and IPS for you, but the people who understand the complete information security system, uh, they are very difficult to find. So, so uh, you know, uh, quoting a few things from the uh, from different uh, articles, if you see on the right-hand side, the cyber security unemployment rate was 0% in 2016, and it is expected to remain there from 2017 to 2021. And I have been uh, dealing with the SOC engineers and L1, L2, L3 security engineers, and designs and architects on security. And I can assure you that if you step into this field and grow in the right direction, uh, you can easily find a job. Uh, another quote is the cyber security ventures predicts that there will be 3.5 million unfilled cyber security positions globally by 2021. So highly recommended technology. 
uh, uh, and if you would like to grow your career in this one, uh, you should. Now, uh, another uh, technology is wireless. So wireless is basically taking your data or sharing the data between the end points with, uh, without using an electrical conductor, right? So, so most uh, common mode of data transfer uh, through wireless is our radio waves. Uh, the most common technologies that are being used for wireless are Wi-Fi, uh, satellite communication, uh, and uh, yeah, you have uh, 5G, 3G, 2G uh, technologies. I have also given five star to 5G. 5G have uh, uh, been in is very new to the market, but by 2019 we are expecting that uh, the the, all the big tele, telco operators will be deploying 5G. The, it will definitely change the network market. The reason is that 5G is predicted to have one millisecond of latency, which is huge. And uh, it will have around one Gbps of throughput. So we believe that this will change uh, the, the way uh, networking work, works. And today, if you look at it like 3G or 2G or 4G networks, uh, they are not that much. Yeah, the 4G networks are pretty reliable, but the latency is quite high. But with this 5G technology, we are will be able to bring down the latency to one second, which will be excellent. Now, it's a five-star technology, but the only thing that I would like to mention in here is that uh, it is difficult to have hands-on in this technology until you are working for a telco operator. So you should plan um, your uh, career uh, to develop in this specialization only if you are working for a telco operator or you have some chances to get job in there because otherwise it's, it's difficult to do hands-on in this technology. Uh, the, the next thing is uh, the uh, video and the telepresence. Uh, this is, you, you all use WhatsApp, you all use Skype, and you know how important it is. So globally, the IP video traffic will be 82% of all consumer internet traffic by 2021. So your, uh, you know, the most of the internet traffic uh, is video. Uh, now, what is the difference between a video and a telepresence? So what you do in the, uh, you know, uh, Skype and WhatsApp is video uh, telephony. But with telepresence, you give an immersive experience, which means that uh, how well you can connect to the other side in a way that you feel that they are sitting across the table. So it's, it's, it's an experience. If you, if you Google on YouTube the different telepresence videos, you will find out that, as you can see in the picture, that people uh, are communicating with each other in a way that they seem to be on the other side of the table. Uh, but, uh, for example, the person can be in another region, right? So it gives you uh, an experience which is immersive. So also a very good uh, area of specialization that you can pursue. Uh, voice over IP, unified communications, and video and telepresence. They are very connected technologies. Now, uh, here comes another five-star technology, which is the cloud computing. So if you remember, uh, the users uh, or the enterprises uh, in the recent years have been building data centers, uh, putting in their servers in there, uh, there is cooling required, fire suppression systems required. This is a whole facility. And uh, what is the purpose of deploying these servers uh, or the systems is uh, to, uh, to deploy their applications. For example, there's a bank who needs a financial application, or there is a, there's a call center application, there's an accounting software. All these will be installed in the, the data center that is, that is built by that organization or a bank. But now the things are changing. Uh, there are large multi-purpose data centers built around the world by different service providers. And now what you need to do is to rent those uh, servers uh, or take a subscription of those servers and deploy your applications. So what uh, it actually do is that uh, you save all the money that you have, uh, you know, all the CapEx investment that you have to do to, to construct a data center and you have uh, a ready-made data center where you can just start deploying your application. This basically reduces your time to market. So uh, there, these the, the cloud uh, services and virtualization have been there for almost seven to eight years, and most of the organizations have already moved to the virtualization stage. Uh, and now uh, uh, the big organizations are also moving towards the cloud 
the public clouds. So if you see on the right hand side, I have listed some uh, uh, names of the companies like Amazon Web Services, Rackspace, OpenStack, VMware, uh, Microsoft Azure. So these are all the companies that are providing different public cloud services. Uh, just to give you an information that AWS today uh, has the largest share of the public cloud uh, and around 45% of the uh, public uh, compute uh, requirements are being filtered by AWS. So it's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, uh, leading the market. And uh, that's why, again, it's a five-star technology. Uh, this uh, technology, even especially if you're working in the U.S. and the Europe market, uh, the ROI is extremely, extremely high. So you can, uh, you can, in months, you can learn this technology and find a job if you are especially in the U.S. and the Europe region. So highly recommended uh, technology to pursue your specialization and career in. Uh, the next emerging technology is IoT. We have shown you in the, in the last graph that uh, uh, there will be 50 billion devices by the end of year 2020. All these devices will be connected to the internet. Now these devices, uh, uh, connectivity mechanism is a bit different. They follow different protocols. Uh, this is uh, still an emerging technology. Um, uh, there will be there is a lot of demand. Every big multinational organization uh, or telecom operator is, is investing on uh, building the IoT platforms. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful about is that uh, this uh, technology is still going through a transition phase. So there is no single company uh, who is leading the uh, uh, you know the the standard so there are different people doing different things so uh, a very good area of specialization but you should think about growing your career in this one uh, if you uh, if you are able to find a job with one of the providers uh, or one of the OEMs that are working in this specific area uh, for for the for the for the uh, you know you can ask a question you can write your question in the in the uh, text box and I will be able to answer it uh, in the uh, at the end of the presentation. Now another uh, area uh, or the new technology is the software divine networking. Uh, so it's it's also a very interesting technology. Uh, so if we know that how router and switches work is that router has a control plane and a data plane. Uh, data plane is for forwarding the traffic and the control plane is taking all the decisions. Now with the with the SDN environment, what is happening is that the control plane will be extracted from the switch or the router and it will be go to a centralized controller. So we have centralized management. Uh, a lot of work has been done on this uh, area um, and especially on the SD-WAN side of it. Uh, and it's a very interesting technology as well. Now, uh, let's move on. So, so this was uh, probably who the, the people who are fresh graduates. Uh, uh, just, okay, so, uh, so we, uh, you know, I've, I've been dealing with the fresh graduates in a professional in the last 14 years, and I, I find out that uh, the fresh graduates are not ready for the market. Uh, the, the, one of the major reasons is that uh, it is very important for the fresh graduates to, to meet with the industry experts, uh, the people who are already in the market and in the field to know more about what is in, uh, you know, uh, what is in more demand, and then accordingly they can build their career. Uh, so, it, it's, uh, so the other important thing that I found out by speaking to the different graduates is the lack of vision and the end goal. So I have met with many students and, and graduates that plan to do, for example, a certain certification. Let's take an example of CCNA, but they exactly don't know what will be the next step. So when you try to plan your journey um, uh, in the networking field or any other field, uh, you should have a full-fledged plan. So you should have the visibility uh, to the end goal. Uh, and this is where we can help you building uh, that strategy. Uh, the other important thing is that uh, we have, uh, you know, I review a lot of resumes from, from, from the graduates. Uh, so when you're doing your graduation in your computer science or telecommunications or electrical engineers, engineering, uh, you need to make sure that 
you specialize in a certain field. You cannot be jack of all trades, but you have to be a, at least master in one technology. And also you have to make sure that you have a practical knowledge that you can present to the employer. Now think about it like this, that if you are trying to find a job, why should the employer hire you? Whenever you have this question in mind, think about it like this. The employer will always hire you if you are solving one of his business problems. So you have to solve a business problem for him to be valuable. So that's the key of, uh, you know, thinking how sh you should, uh, you know, uh, you know, to define your strategy uh, for building a career in any of the fields. Uh, let me give you a few examples. Uh, this, this, these, these snapshots are taken from the resumes, resumes of a uh, few engineers. And if you look at it in all of the resumes uh, or the CVs, you will find out that uh, they know everything. So whatever they studied in their computer engineering, for example, Java, uh, Packet Tracer, C++, NMS, SQL, HTML, Everything they have written in their CV, in all of the four CVs, this is the common thing. They are writing everything. This kind of a CV will never appeal an employer. You need to make sure that your CV reflects your interest. So, for example, from a network engineering point of view, I would expect a CV to list the highlight, the networking qualifications or the specializations the person have achieved uh, during his graduation or after the graduation. So make your CV look like that you are a network engineer. So, so that is that is one thing, that is one thing that you have to consider. Now, if you look at it, I have shown you different type of specializations from network to security, data center, and wireless. So if you look at, uh, this is the average salary uh, uh, for a specialization. So if you look at it, for example, the security specialist, which is the number three from the, uh, from the left, uh, you will see that it is in very high demand and they are very highly paid uh, engineers. Uh, then if you go from the right hand side, third uh, uh, cloud specialist, uh, they are also very, very demanding. Uh, they have very good demand in the market. So if you look at it, that the, you know, the, the salaries of the engineers in different specializations ranges from 80,000 to uh, 120,000. The way you select uh, the type of specialization that you have to do is based on your interest, uh, where you exactly live, what your background is, or what your graduation was in. So there are different factors that should decide which specialization you should follow in the uh, in networking. Now, uh, it is extremely important that you develop a career strategy. Um, and to develop a career strategy, uh, the first thing that you should analyze is that where you are, either you are graduating, you are a professional, you have just entered the field, or you have five years of experience. So you have to analyze that. And then you have to analyze what, you're, what is your current situation. Uh, you have to find out uh, that what are your strengths, what are you good at. Uh, and you also need to find out your weaknesses. Uh, and then you, have, you need also need to find out the different resources that you will be using to, to, to build your career in this field. Uh, the other important thing is that you need to find out that where you want to see yourself after two years and how can you get there. So there could be short-term objectives, there should be medium-term objectives and the long-term objectives. And this is, this is one of the very key uh, things that I'm missing uh, when talking to the graduates. Uh, you must develop your strategy and, and all I always advise to the students that the best time to develop this strategy is when you are in the third year uh, of, your, of your graduation. Because the last two years you should work on executing this strategy uh, which makes sure that uh, by the time you uh, finish your graduation you are ready for the market. So you have to plan this journey well. Uh, similarly, for the professionals who are already graduated and they are in the market, uh, probably their strategy will be a bit different because probably they need to find a job very quickly. So they can have a short-term strategy and a long-term strategy. And basically, as an IT specialist, we help you build that strategy, and I'll, I'll show you an example of that. 
Now, the golden question. Uh, there are a lot of certifications uh, in the market. And every vendor or the OEM is pitching their own certifications. And you can see a list right in front of you. This is just a few of them. Now, which certification should you follow? That's the question. And here I see a lot of professionals and graduates. Uh, uh, there is a lot of confusion in this area because what happens is that they start with CCNA routing and switching, then move to CCNA voice. Then somebody tells them, no, security is very good. So they move to security plus. And then somebody tells them, no, the cloud is doing very well, so you should you know, enter into the AWS. But each of these areas, uh, you know, you, there is a specific path that you need to follow. For example, you decide today that I need to be a, uh, a cloud expert, expert in the next one year. So there, there is a certain path that you need to follow. And that's where we find uh, that students are confused. And why they're confused is because they are not meeting a lot of people who are already in the industry or in the same field. Uh, uh, at IT specialists, we help candidates uh, we help candidates uh, uh, define this strategy uh, that what should be the first step on the foundation, then how to go to the advanced, and then uh, professional and expert level. And I'll show you an example of that as well. So uh, this is a this is a very interesting slide. I would like you to focus a bit on this because this lists up some very key points. Uh, these all all of these points are based on experience, and it will definitely help them help you uh, uh, in in defining your career strategy. So the first thing is uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. So if you don't have a plan and you are randomly doing some stuff to to grow your career, that's the wrong thing. So you need to develop a three six months plan, one year plan, two years plan um, to to develop your uh, career in a certain field. So do have a plan that's very important the other important thing is that begin with the end goal in mind which means that uh, do not just start a certification but you should know that what you want to be in the next two years and then take a step-by-step -step approach to reach the destination so a structured approach is a must to have a successful career the other important thing is put some timelines. A project without a timeline is not a project. And how do I motivate myself for achieving something is, that let's say you want to do certain, uh, you want to achieve certain thing in one year. Break it into milestones, into a three months milestone. Each milestone is three months. So after every three months, you review that either you have achieved your goals or not. If you have not, then adjust your project plan accordingly but you need to define your timelines to do certain, or whatever you are trying to do or trying to achieve in your career. Another important point, focus on what you have in hand. So you don't have a job, do not complain about it. You can study, you can practice on your laptop. I do not have a hardware to practice networking stuff. Everything is being virtualized now, so you can practice right on your laptop. There are. There are solutions like GNS3 and Eve that can build networks like tier one ISP. So you can do all of that. So whatever you don't have in hand, for example, you don't have a job, uh, you don't have uh, you know, uh, a chance to work on, on certain technology, do not complain about that, but focus on what you have in hand. Sharpen your soft skills, this is, this is, this is a key point. Uh, uh, it will help you get find a job very quickly. Uh, meet the industry experts. Now, while you are graduating or you are a professional, always meet with the industry experts. Uh, with the fresh graduates or the students, the most important problem I found out is that uh, they are sometimes taking guidance from the from the people who are only doing academics. So you must meet with the industry experts to find out what your future will be. Uh, do not use lack of experience as an excuse. So if you, if you look at the different certifications, uh, uh, the way they work is that they recommend that you should have six months, one year, two years of experience before attempting the um, exam. Now, one of the important thing is that do not wait for experience to come. 
to do these certifications because as I said, there are now tools available that help you cover your experience. Like for example, I gave you the example of GNS3 and EVE. Uh, so any networking technology that exists today can be virtualized and can be implemented on your right on your laptop. So you can cover most part of your experience uh, by practicing on these virtualized platforms. So I would highly recommend that there are so many guys I meet that complain about lack of experience, but keep moving towards your certification path, keep practicing the stuff. It's all about how you practice, how much you practice, and you will definitely find a job. Uh, another advice to, to the professionals is work as a freelancer to get an experience. Uh, there are so many good sites out there on the internet like freelancer.com, guru.com, upward.com. Uh, once you have uh, you know certain skill or knowledge, uh, try to get a small freelancing job uh, which will help you get uh, cover your experience part of it. Uh, do not let your employer decide your career path. I meet with so many fresh graduates and and one of the one of the things that they mention is uh, when I ask them the question that uh, which uh, organization would you like to join? What is your plan? So they said that you know uh, the first job that you will get will decide in which field we would like to pursue our specialization. Now that's a stupid answer. Now you need to define your priorities. You need to decide which technology you would like to work on rather than you wait for the first job to come in and then develop your, uh, uh, your own, um, expertise in the area where, which, in which the organization is working on. So do not let your employee decide your career path. You have to decide it yourself. And uh, another important thing is there is no such thing as free lunch. Invest in yourself, invest in your studies, uh, uh, invest in, uh, you know, uh, getting knowledge and certifications. Uh, do not just rely on the free stuff. Now, uh, just moving to the last part of the presentation, uh, uh, we at the IT specialists have made uh, uh, a complete journey. Uh, for the students and professionals who are trying to build their career in networking and security. Uh, so uh, if you look at it on the right hand side, uh, the, the first thing that we recommend to our candidates is that you need to have a plan. And that plan basically uh, it depends upon who you are, where are you from, uh, how much budget you have, which uh, you, you did your graduation in which uh, area, like you're an electrical engineer, or a commerce graduate or, you know, and then based on that, we develop a plan for you. We give a six months, one year, two years plan uh, based on your, uh, uh, based on your end goal. Uh, we also have one-to-one -one mentoring services where you can speak to our professionals and experts on one-to-one -one basis and get an advice. Uh, we have uh, full-fledged contact material uh, uh, to, to help you pass the certification exams in the first try. Uh, we also provide you the virtual lab so that you can practice those uh, technologies. And at the end is the certification. So quickly moving on to uh, the career report. I think this is the most important thing that I would like to emphasize on. Uh, that you should, if you do not have a plan how to, uh, how to develop your career in this field, the first thing you should get from us is the career report. Uh, because this is a personalized, this is not a generic report. For each of the candidates, we build this report uh, based on his circumstances. So, for example, uh, we tell you that uh, what are the different options available for you uh, uh, based on your background, your budget. Uh, we also give you a full-fledged project plan. We tell you what will be the cost of, um, you know, uh, doing this uh, certifications or exams. So everything is covered in that report. And I would like to show you maybe a sample report so that uh, you get an idea of, you know, how the report looks like. Uh, I'll just share it here. So I hope you can see my screen now. So this is, this is, this is a report that I have made for, or the team has made for one of the candidates who was trying to pursue his, her career in security. So if you look at it, this is a very comprehensive report personalized to your needs. And uh, based on your background, we build this report. So let's probably go to a few sections. So what are the different options available? Uh, what should be the final financial expectations you should uh, have? Uh, then we develop the career strategy for you. 
and in our plan there are four different levels that we uh, we define the uh, for a candidate which is the foundation level advanced level advanced level the professional level and the expert level and for to 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 achieve each of the level we give you the complete plan for example uh, let's take an example of the, if you see on the on the foundation side of it, we are recommending that you should follow Cisco Certified Network Associate Routing and Switching. And then we, we tell you about the certification, which resources you should use, uh, how many questions the exam has, uh, uh, how much the exam costs. So all this information we provide you. And same, same way we more move to from foundation to advanced and then to expert levels. So all of this information is provided to you. And at the end, we give you Timelines. That what are the expected timelines for you to complete the certifications? Plus, we give you the cost of the each of the certification. So this is this is a very comprehensive report. Uh, report. And I would request each of you, uh, if you can look at it on our website, uh, the, uh, the the report section. Uh, it just costs uh, fifty dollars to order a report, but it will give you an year or two years of plan that how you should. Uh, plan your journey for in this in this field, uh, and this could be um, uh, based on your interest. It could be uh, you know a report on the uh, you know the, if you are trying to pursue uh, cloud um, as an area of specialization or IoT uh, or routing and switching or unified communications. We provide uh, guidance for each of the tracks. Let me just switch over to my presentation. Okay, so the career report is one thing uh, that you can have, and then we have the career advisory services where you can have one-to-one -one mentoring uh, with uh, the with our uh, you know uh, our uh, professionals. Uh, so if you go to the advisory section of our website, you will find different professionals listed there. Uh, you can hire their services for one-to-one -one guidance. Uh, now, uh, the content that we provide uh, to our uh, to our users is. Uh, the technology workbooks. Uh, so these workbooks basically cover different certifications. So, for example, uh, if you if you take a CCNA, uh, then we provide you uh, the complete technology workbook that will help you pass your certification in the first go. So it's like a study guide or a book. And these books uh, are available on Amazon, uh, on our website, uh, and as well as Kindle. So you can order it from Amazon or from our website as well. Uh, the other thing that we pro produce is the quick, quick reference sheets, which means that uh, just before, one week before the exam, uh, if you would like to review the contract, the, the content, uh, these are very summarized uh, form of, uh, 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 you know, short notes that will help you remember the most important technology concepts. And the last thing that we do is the practice questions. So the, these practice questions help you pass your tech exams in your first exam. So these are the three different products that we uh, that we provide you and that can help you pass a certification. Uh, we also provide you VRACs. With VRACs, we mean that uh, we provide you a virtualized image and OVA, uh, or uh, uh, you know a VM image. Uh, it's fully loaded with the softwares. And you can just uh, download this image, run it on your laptop, and you can do any kind of labs. So, for example, if you have purchased a CCNA track, we will give you the OVA or the VM image uh, of the CCNA track, and you can practice uh, right on your laptop the different labs of CCNA. Now, just to just to let you know that these are the courses that are currently available on our website, uh, from routing, switching, design, service provider, and security. Uh, and uh, this can be purchased anytime. Uh, but our 2018 roadmap is very, very impressive, uh, in which we are introducing two courses every month. Uh, our special focus of 2018 is security and cloud. In cloud, we are focusing fully on AWS, and in security, there are different certifications that are coming up. So if you are planning to grow your career in security and or cloud, uh, I would highly recommend that you should uh, keep checking our website. Uh, all these certifications will be available uh, by December 2018. Every month there will be two courses introduced and the dates are written, uh, as you can see, uh, the, the, the security plus is coming in April 2018 and cloud practitioner is coming in April 2018 as well. So this, this is our plan for 2018. Um, 
how do we differentiate? So uh, if you if you are planning to grow your career in this field, I would highly recommend that you subscribe to our newsletter, uh, do a visit our website. Uh, our packages, our subscriptions are very very economical. Uh, you can access all our courses, any current course or any future course, by just spending fifteen dollars a month. So that's the cost of the uh, subscription. So uh, uh, if you are planning to to pursue, uh, you know. Um, your career in this field, uh, I would recommend you to subscribe for our website, uh, buy one of the subscriptions, which will help you uh, get the most updated content and help you pass your certifications. Uh, that's the uh, probably the probably was the last slide in my presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always visit our website. You can email to sales at ipspecialist.net, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, we will be also sharing with you. Uh, uh, okay, let's probably move on to the few questions that have been there. So I have a question. Also, I have done. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, Alam Zeb, I have I've got your question. Uh, uh, and as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, I would highly recommend you that uh, uh, you are moving from an RF area to security. So you need a complete plan. I have just shown you a career report. Uh, in which we build the uh, the strategy for a student. Uh, I would recommend you that you go to our website, uh, purchase the career report for yourself. Uh, we'll we'll get all the information from you and build a strategy for you for the next two years, which will help you to completely move into the security domain. So that's it from my side. Um, I hope uh, the presentation was helpful. Uh, it will really help us if you can. Uh, Send your feedback to us on sales at itspecialist.net uh, because we would like to hear from you if this seminar was helpful to you so that we can we'll keep arranging this kind of seminars for students and professionals. Uh, and uh, that's it from my side. Thank you very much for joining the call. Uh, and you can always send your questions at sales at itspecialist.net. Thank you.